This video is going to be almost as edgy as an angsty teenager. Are you ready? All right, let's cut to the point. There are a number of terms associated with sword use that are often used interchangeably or arbitrarily. There's a lot of confusion. Um, in fact, I remember quite a while ago, it might even be as, as long as 10 years ago by now, I posted a, a thread on my armory asking about that. So what's the difference between a cut, a slash, a chop, a cleave? etc. And I remember that after several people replied to that, I was still just as confused as I was before. And that's because in standard language usage, it's not that clear. I mean, dictionaries, for example, aren't written by martial artists. And if you look at the different terms, they are quite often well synonyms, basically and they don't differentiate that much. So the type of action that you perform with a sharp blade in order to either damage an opponent on a historical battlefield or in a duel or in a severed Tommy Mad, um, there are different ways of doing it. There are different cutting mechanics, but the, the terms aren't necessarily that clear. So for example, if you look up the term cut, now according to the Oxford dictionary. This means to make an opening, incision, or wound in something with a sharp edge tool or object. That's a very general, broad definition, and that's also how I tend to use the word cut. To me, cut is like the umbrella term, basically. So any sort of action that you use with a sharp blade to you know, open something up, or sever, or you know, slice, split, whatever, any, any of those terms fall under cut, at least in my opinion. Now, there's also the word slash, which I find really rather useless. But um, according to Merriam-Webster, uh, it says here to lash out, cut, or thrash about with or as with an edge blade. Now, that doesn't tell you anything about the cutting mechanic. It doesn't sound like a very sophisticated action, but there is also really no useful information here about the details. Alternatively, it says to cut with or as with rough sweeping strokes. Which again, that's not very specific. Rough sweeping... According to the Oxford Dictionary, it means to cut with a wide sweeping movement typically using a knife or a sword. Now, a wide sweeping movement, that's, that gives us a little bit of information. So, a wide movement. If you say you have a knife and you cut with, with this very you know, tight movement, so your, your arm is, is fairly strongly flexed and say you're doing something like this. Now, that is not a wide sweeping motion. A sweeping motion would be more something like this. So if I were to pick up this arming sword here and perform something like this, I'm going to have a, a sweeping wide arc cut that could be considered a slash according to this definition. Sometimes I've seen the word slash used specifically for a tip cut where instead of striking with the upper third of the blade you would impact with the point. So rather than performing a cut either like this or like that where you follow through, you would flick it out like so and impact with the point. Now this is technically not a cut. This is really more tearing into and ripping. But uh, this also has its uses. It's limited in its effectiveness because I mean, you can imagine if only this much of the tip enters, it's not going to you know, get deep enough to, to reach organs, for example. It can still be debilitating if it strikes a tendon and severs it or opens up an artery, things like that. And in, in most cases, it's somewhat limited, but again, viable technique as well. Then there's a the term to chop. Now, this, according to Merriam-Webster, is to cut into or sever, usually by repeated blows of a sharp instrument. Oxford 
cut something into pieces with repeated sharp blows of an axe or a knife. The way I understand the chop is it is it's less of a pronounced arc. There will always be an arc, of course, but a chop is a more perpendicular motion. It's never entirely perpendicular, but more so than, say, a slash, if we want to use that term. So if you think about how wood is split, so there is, of course, an arc in the beginning, but then you're basically aiming to bring that axe head down almost straight onto the wood that you're trying to split. You're not slicing through the wood. Right? You, you want to drive it in between the fibers that drive them apart. So this is a fairly straight shop. It has a bit of an arc, of course, but it depends on at what point in this arc you're impacting. You know, if you impact pretty much at the end of the arc, this is going to be more of a chop. There's also the term cleave, which um, is defined here as to split, especially along the grain, or alternatively split or sever, again, especially along a natural line or grain. So cleave and chop is essentially the same, or it is very often used in the same way. So when you're splitting wood, you're cleaving something. It's, it's always this act of separating something. So a cleave, now, if you cut with a sword, you can also cleave. For example, what you see right here, that's cleaving into that skull, right? So that's a, that's a cleaving action, but you can also call it a cut, at least as far as I'm concerned. So the how or hew is one of the three basic attacks that are taught in German longsword fencing. That's the first. The second is the thrust, and the third is the slice. Now, what is meant by slice in the manuals is that you put the like you press the blade against your opponent's body and then either push or pull. So that's what's meant by a slice. And it is used really only against unprotected skin because it's it's the weakest kind of cutting action that you can do. There is no percussive force whatsoever. You really just have the pressure that you put against it with your hands and then I mean, you can, of course, bring your, your core into the movement and, and slice with that, but it is very limited. It can be a very useful technique. A slice can be used to control the opponent without injuring them necessarily. So if you press the blade against their arms and you move them around, now that can be used to prevent their cut from going through or you know, it can also be used in grappling, etc., depending on you know, what kind of clothing they're wearing. If it's a very sturdy fabric, you may not do anything or only produce a shallow cut, but it still reduces the opponent's ability to hurt you at that time. I've often seen people say when they watch longsword cuts, oh, you're doing it wrong, you have to do a draw cut, you have to, you know, as you throw the cut, you have to draw it in to do this slice well that's slice in the more colloquial sense but uh that's really not true i mean you can do that but it's not necessary it really depends on the weapon the style of preference but also the situation so i've seen draw cuts like this particularly in filipino martial arts where people strike basically like this so they the arm remains mostly bent throughout the cut. That is one way to do it. It's particularly if you're fighting at a very close distance. And of course, the types of blades that they use are also suitable for that. Like this, for example, has a strong recurve in the blade. So this is very suitable for this sort of drawing action. So if you perform a relatively tight slice here and bring it in, this is going to perform quite well. Now with a straight arming sword like this, that's not necessary. You don't need to give it this pronounced draw cut for that to work. For one, it's got a pretty decent amount of mass in the blade and it's also a quite a thin blade. 
so this won't produce a whole lot of friction as it moves through the target. So with this, I can benefit from the long blade and strike at more of a distance. So the main difference here between the draw cut and this sort of hue is that the latter is more suitable against hard material, whereas the former is better against soft material. So the draw cut will do better against soft tissue, like the belly, for example, but it will stop at bone. I mean, there's no way you can slice through bone like with, with just this, this sort of slicing motion. You need some degree of percussive force. Now, with enough percussive force, you will slice through it, but this generates more percussive force because of the way it's used. So this is going to be better in, at severing bone. A rapier, on the other hand, has a lot less mass in the blade. So you can see how narrow it is. And this is generally taught to be used in indeed a draw cut. So as you, as you strike, you draw it in to make sure that it slices soft tissue. Like there's pretty much no way you can cut through bone with this. Now I haven't tested it, but it just seems highly, highly unlikely. Rapiers can cut, but soft tissue and the way they're used in a fight is, this is not a fight ender. So if you slice somebody across the arm, it's, it's going to hinder them, of course. And depending on where it's done, like if you, if you do a draw cut and then open up the jugular, of course that's lethal, no doubt about it. But that's really not the main purpose. Now, the main purpose obviously is thrusting, cuts depending on the situation, may give you an, exam an advantage, no doubt about it. But it's just not due to the design, it's not ideal. If you wanted to split a shield, forget about a draw cut. I mean, you cannot slice through this. It's not gonna happen. In this case, you really need more of a chopping motion to actually get in there and split the wood fibers. So what you really need to keep in mind here is that the different cuts are not exclusive. There is no such thing as a perfect, you know, exclusive chop or an exclusive slice, unless you're literally talking about this sort of thing, where you press it against the target and then push or pull. Because if you think about it, the sword will always move in an arc. That's how it's swung. You don't, you don't attack like this. But if you perform a hue, there will be rotation in it. Regardless of how you perform it, it'll change it a little bit. Like if I throw it like this, that's a bit different than if I throw it this way. But either way, it's not this kind of action. It's still this. And depending on at what point in the arc it hits, this will have an effect on how strongly it slices or how much of a percussive strike it is. And that even applies to axes like this. Now, because this has such a wide blade and also is very strongly curved, you can definitely perform a slicing cut with this. So the, again, depending on if it, if it hits here and then continues through like this, you can see clearly that this is a slice. Of course, right? Whereas if I if I were to strike like this, so if I were to aim to stop the cut right here in front of me, so right where the opponent is, because I cut the arc short at the end of the, the arc, it'll have a bit of a forward forward movement here. So the rotation stops, but it still moves forward a little bit. So this is more of a chop. The same is true for the sword. If I stop the cut here, this is a lot more percussive because I'm driving the force mostly forward. In fact, I can amplify it by using a push-pull motion and I can impact like this and drive it forward. 
mainly. Now again, that won't eliminate the slice completely. There will be some of that in there, but it's more of a well, chop or cleave, if you will. To wrap it up, don't get too hung up on the terminology, since there is no universal, agreed upon, precise definition of each of these cutting actions anyway. There are just certain tendencies in the way that the terms are used. Um, cut can be really be used for just about anything as an umbrella term. Uh, slash is a little problematic. Uh, the terms chop and cleave generally imply more of a percussive action, like splitting wood with an axe, and where the force goes more straight into the target, whereas a slice, whereas a slice whereas a slice or draw cut relies on very strong rotation through the target or a pushing or pulling action. And a hue is somewhat in between. It has a percussive force, but there is also a slicing action involved. So yeah, I hope this helps a little bit to clear things up and uh, all that's left to do is cut the video, obviously. Thanks for watching.